I give the floor to the representative of Algeria. Sorry. Algeria. Amar, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to begin my statement by expressing my gratitude to Mr. Wenesland for his alarming briefings. A briefing in which he once again underscores the stark realities in the Middle East. In his report, the word most used by Mr. Wenesland was killing, killed, kills. I wish also to extend my thanks to Mrs. Ellen Clarks for her remarks and especially for her recommendation. Today, we are called upon to take a serious and clear stand against the deteriorating situation in the region. The primary task of this very Council is the maintenance of international peace and security. This cannot be achieved through fleeting words eloquently delivered before the cameras. The gravity of the situation in the Middle East requires more than rhetorics. It demands decisive and swift action. Everyone under this roof must recognize that the region is on the edge of an abyss or a precipice as you have stated, Mr. President. If it falls entered its darkness, the consequences will be far-reaching and no one, yes, no one will be immune. We must heed the lessons of history to prevent the worst, which is not less than a fool Fledge regional war. Mr. President, the Israeli occupying power continues its apartheid policies, relentlessly pursuing plans for ethnic cleansing in Gaza and pushing the West Bank to the brink of chaos. The occupying power is also creating new fait accompli on the ground. This year alone, we have witnessed unprecedented level of settlement, of expansion, of annexation of land. It is evident that Resolution 2334 has had no tangible impact. The Israeli occupier act with impunity, as if operating in a lawless jungle. It continues to renege on previous agreement and consistently violate international law. International law, the very foundation of civilized society. If we are serious, if we are serious about protecting future generations from the scourge of war, as we pledged in the United Nations Charter, the solution is clear. There can be no peace in the Middle East without the establishment of an independent Palestinian state. Mr. President, the advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice, delivered on July the 19th of this year, is addressed to the General Assembly 
and to this council alike. The court stated that the precise modalities for ending Israel's unlawful prisons in the occupied Palestinian territory are matters for both the General Assembly and the Security Council to address. The General Assembly has already heeded this call by adopting yesterday, just yesterday, a resolution. Will this Council remain deaf to the demand of the court? Will it continue to disregard the principle that underpin the United Nations? What will remain to the Council if it does not respond to the order of its highest judicial body? It is the inaction of this Council that encourages the Israeli occupying power to continue its brutal policies. The deteriorating situation in the occupying Palestinian territory, as highlighted by Mr. Wenesland's briefing, illustrate the terror endured by Palestinians, a terror that spares no one, not even children, and no Palestinian, regardless of gender or age, has been spared from this violence, and yet we see no investigation into the killing of Palestinians. However, the Israeli authority rush, yes, rush to investigate the death of foreigners, but not of Palestinians, definitely not. This double standards in the death reveals a profound disregard of Palestinian lives, a contempt rooted in the hateful racism that the world has long condemned. For us, Palestinian lives also matter. Today, the human right principle seems to have been monopolized by one group at the expense of another. Colleagues, today we urgently need decisions backed by a robust follow-up, a robust follow-up and accountability mechanism. This is why my country reaffirmed its belief that for those who reject peace, for those who don't believe in peace, peace must be imposed upon them. The Council has a legal and moral responsibility to act, and we cannot afford to remain passive spectators. This Council possess the tools and the authority needed to respond, but only, only if there is the political will to rise up to the challenge. If we fail in this duty, the Council risks becoming a mere platform for speeches rather than the guardian of international peace and security that it was created to be. Mr. President, it is time to move beyond narrow calculations and take the necessary step, the necessary binding decision that will restore peace and security in our region. I thank you. I thank the representative of Algeria for their statement.